Hello everyone, I am Sonali Kanode, Assistant Professor of Artificial Intelligence and Data Science Department of ASMS IOIT Pune. In this video, we are, see, uh, we are seeing that what is memory management in operating system. So, first of all, what is memory management? So, me memory management is the functionality of an operating system which handles or manage primary memory and move process back and forth between main memory and disk during execution. So the, in multi-programming computer, the operating system resides in a part of memory and the rest is used by multiple processes. Memory management keeps track of each and every memory location regardless of either it is allocated to same, uh, some process or it is free. It checks how much memory is to be allocated to process and it decides uh, which process will get memory at that time. It tracks wh whenever some memory gets free or unallocated and correspondingly it updates the status. So uh, why memory management is required the, to allocate and deallocate memory before and after process execution. So the main aim of memory management to achieve the efficient utilization of memory. So memory management, why it is required? So allocation and deallocation de of memory before and after process execution. So to keep track of used memory space by process. Uh, then maxima to minimize fragmentation issue. To proper utilization of main memory. To maintain data integrity while executing of process. So uh, these are the memory management requirements. Memory management uh, is the functionality of an operating system which handles or manages primary memory. Then memory management keeps track of each and every memory location, either it is allocated to some process or it is free. So uh, the memory management uh, following are the memory management requirements. First is the real location protection, sharing, logical organization, and physical organization. So, <clears throat> reallocation, the memory available to us gets shared among various process in the uh, various process uh, in the multi-programming system. Thus, it is impossible, uh, impossible to de determine uh, what other programs would reside in our main memory during the program execution. And if we swap the active processes in and out uh, of the main memory, it lets the OS have a bigger and better pool of process that are ready to execute. So uh, the next is the protection. The running multiple programs simultaneously process opposes a uh, risk and uh, one program might override the memory space of another. Therefore, every process must be protected against unwanted interferences from other process. It balancing acts between reallocating and protecting requirements. So since it is impossible to predict a program location in the main memory, we can't verify the absolute address at compile time of protection. So most programming languages allow dynamic calculation of address at uh, runtime, therefore, the process processor or uh, not the operating system must satisfy the memory protection requirements. So this means that the validity of memory or uh, reference can be checked. Next is the sharing. Some protection mechanism allow different process to access the same section of main memory. This means that multiple process can access the same copy of program rather than each having their own separate copy. So for, for example, multiple process might need to use the same system file. It makes sense to load a single copy of this file into the main memory and allow this process to share. So it keeps to, uh, it keeps to memory management to allow uh, for this kind of shared memory access in a control manner without uh, satisfying protection. Uh, various mechanisms are used to support sharing capability that also allow for reallocation. Next is the uh, logical organization. The main memory can be organized 
as a linear or one directional address space consisting of a sequence of words or bytes. So most programs can be broken down into models, some of which are unmodifiable, that is execute only or read only, and some context modifiable data. So uh, these are the logical, uh, this is a logical organization. Next is the physical organization. The structure of computer's memory consists of two levels, referred as the main memory and secondary memory. The main memory is faster, but more expensive. Then secondary memory is volatile. Therefore, secondary memory is typically used for a long-term data storage, while the main memory holds the program currently in use. The memory, so the primary concern between the uh, secondary memory and the main memory is the flow of information. It is not practical or a programmer to manage this of two reasons. The first reason is that the if the main memory available for the program and it uh, its data is insufficient, the a programmer uh, uh, may resort uh, to overlaying these are our different models to be assigned uh, to the same memory region. The main downside of this is that it can be time consuming for the programmer. And in the second, uh, in multi-programming environment, a programmer doesn't know how much space will be available at coding time or where that space is uh, in the uh, memory. So uh, there are the... <clears throat> Memory management concept. There are two memory management techniques. First is the continuous memory management and next is the uh, non-contiguous uh, memory management. Uh, so in contiguous technique, uh, execution process uh, must be loaded entirely the main memory and contiguous pro uh, memory allocation. Each process is contained uh, in a single continuous block of a memory. Memory is divided into several fixed sides of partition. Each partition contains exactly one process. Uh, continuous techniques can be divided into uh, two types. First one is the fixed uh, or static partitioning. Next is the variable or dynamic partitioning. Uh, so first one is the fixed partitioning. Uh, in this, uh, the oldest and simplest technique, uh, used to put more than one process in the main uh, main memory. Uh, in the main memory, uh, in this partitioning, number of partitions non overlying in RAM are fixed, but size of each partition may or may not be same, as it is contiguous al allocation. Hence, no spanning is allowed. Uh, here, partitions are made before execution or during system configure. This is the diagram. Diagram of uh, fixed partitioning. Then uh, these are the advantages. Uh, first one is the easy, uh, advantages of fixed partitioning is easy to implement and uh, little OS or overhead. This advantage is that internal fragmentation, external fragmentation, limit process size, limitation of degree of multiprogramming, etc. Next is the uh, variable partitioning. Variable partitioning is a part of continuous allocation techniques. It is used to uh, elevate the problem faced by uh, fixed partitioning. It contra in contrast uh, with fixed partitioning, uh, partitions are not made before execution or uh, during system configuration. Uh, various features associated with the variable partitioning, initially RAM is empty and partitions are made during the runtime. According to process need instead of partitioning during system configure, the size of partition will be equal to incoming process. The partition size varies according to the need uh, of the process so that the internal fragmentation can be avoided to ensure uh, efficient utilization of RAM. Then next is the number of partitions in RAM is not fixed and depends on the number of incoming process and main memory size. So this is the diagram of dynamic partitioning or a variable partitioning. Uh, these are the advantages. First is the uh, no internal fragmentation, no registration uh, on degree of multiprogramming, no limitation uh, on the size of the process. And disadvantages is that difficult implementation, 
external fragmentation etc thank you